Welcome back, guys. This is Gaming with Austin, and today we are on part two a futuristic apartment type one. Why is it that? For some people? I'm a watcher in the sky. Oftentimes, they don't care about how many calories they consume. That is because they can't control that. Because alcohol has calories. How does dieting fail? Because for some people, fat loss is simply not healthy. How? Is it that for some people that diets don't work? Because when they diet down in an effort to lose weight, their bones can actually become really brittle. Some people think that people with hypothyroidism are gaining weight because they're overeating, but the truth is they're gaining weight even though they are under eating. Even though most of us, the truth is they're, they're not overeating at all. People with hypothyroidism almost never overeat. In fact, oftentimes they almost always under-eat. If you prevent your body from storing fat, you're fucked. Because your body needs to store fat. If your body can't do that, <clears throat> your bones are going to become really brittle. Your bones are going to become extremely brittle. And simply having a low fat percentage can actually put your body at risk for malnutrition. One of those vitamins that requires fat stores to absorb is vitamin E. If you're having trouble absorbing vitamin E because your fat percentage is really low, you know, it's not just a diet that is low in vitamin D that could put you at risk for osteoporosis, it's not just that. If there was a court order, some anorexia patients are subject to involuntary hospitalization against their will, even if they are living on their own. Parents had had legal guardianship over their children. And they refuse. They let children do their own thing to fight anorexia, like increase their food intake slowly. That's gonna get the court order involved. That's.
that's probably going to get the court order involved. What I'm trying to... Without growth hormone, if your body can't produce growth hormone, your body's gonna waste away very quickly. Like, those who don't make it to full adult height are not gonna live very long. In fact, their lifespan... Many of us are led to believe that those with dwarfism tend to live longer. But you're wrong. Oftentimes, people with dwarfism don't live. Like, their lifespan. They don't live very. They don't live to be like 80 or 90 years old. Oftentimes, their lifespan is cut very short. Because. Dwarfism can. Even, even if they can't help their dwarfism. The only way how you can gain muscle while practicing intermittent fasting is to be on steroids. It's really the only way to do it. Truth is, those with hypothyroidism, they're still gaining weight even though they're severely under eating. And cutting down food will only make things worse because if they start losing fat, symptoms of hypothyroidism gets worse. Which means that, you know, it's not just a diet that is low in vitamin D that could put you at risk for vitamin D deficiency. It's not just about a diet that is low in vitamin D. It's not just a diet that is low in vitamin D that could put them at risk for malnutrition, mm -hmm. for vitamin D deficiency. Simply put this, having a low fat percentage can actually increase your risk. Even having a low fat percentage can actually increase your risk. Diets don't always work, because if you diet for too long, your bones could become really brittle, even if you if you don't gain back the weight, your bones could still become really brittle. If you, if, if you don't gain back the weight and you diet for too long, yet don't gain back the weight, one sign that you should stop dieting is that your bones are more likely to be, are going to become really brittle. Because your fat deposits aren't just there to keep you warm, or to have energy in reserve for a famine. Your fat cells aren't- your body fat is not just there for- it's not just there for that. There's also another reason why your body has to store fat. To help you absorb fat-soluble vitamins. Without your fat deposits, not only you're going to lose a lot of muscle mass, but you're also going to lose a lot of bone mass. You're going to be, you're going to end up losing a lot of bone mass, not just fat, 
not just muscle mass when you cut down to like single digit fat percentages, like lower end of the single digit. You're also going to lose a lot of bone mass. My goal? There are people out there who... Having visible abdominal muscles, if you have hypothyroidism, is a sign that you're not healthy. For someone... It's a sign that your health is declining. That is because when you have hypothyroidism, fat loss goes from being a healthy thing to becoming an unhealthy thing. Because no thyroid hormone... Because your thyroid hormone that prevents you from gaining weight also keeps your bones from becoming brittle when you lose when you cut down on food like prevents your bones from becoming brittle when you lose fat as a hormone helps Outside of fat deposits, the thyroid hormone might actually help you absorb vitamin D. If you don't have that... Okay, I'm... I'll be posting a video later on, John. Would you close my door, John? Yes. When you don't have that hormone, and you're extremely lean, your vitamin D levels would be almost zero. Because, for one, you don't have the fat deposits necessary to absorb the vitamin D. And two, you don't have the hormone that will help you absorb vitamin D when fat deposits are absent. already thin to begin with, but the problem I might have, my goal is to try to get as lean as I can get naturally. The only way to help get a thyroid pa a hypothyroidism patient to lose weight is to, like, to lose fat is, the only way how you can do that is to put them on steroids. The problem with being extremely lean is that when you're lean like that, the lower your fat percentage is, the more likely you are to suffer from bone problems, like osteoporosis. And that is because vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. It ain't water soluble. Which means that if your fat percentage gets too low, your body's gonna have a hard time absorbing vitamin D. The amount of glycogen your body can store is limited by your fat percentage. Like, how I destroy fat loss? One of the factors behind that is vitamin D. The lower your fat percentage gets, the more likely you are to develop osteoporosis at a much younger age. 
your self-esteem could suffer too. when your fat percentage gets too low. And that is because your body needs to hold on to some of the fat no matter how much you eat. Even if you eat very little sugar, your body is always going to store some of any amount of sugar you have, if you eat very little of it, your body is always going to store some of it as fat, no matter how much you actually eat. That is because your fat deposits are crucial to the absorption of nutrients. Meaning that if your fat percentage gets too low, you're more likely to develop bone problems. Not only your muscles are going to get weaker, your bones are going to get weaker. Your bones are going to get weaker. Dieting down to lose weight is not healthy because even if you don't gain back the weight, you're still going to suffer health problems. Like, potentially suffer health problems if you don't. <sighs> because if you avoid dieting altogether without even if you avoid gaining back the weight after dieting, your metabolism is still going to slow down. In fact, the absorption rate... Your body might end up having trouble absorbing vitamin D, which means that, all in all, your likelihood of becoming deficient in vitamin D3 will increase the lower your fat percentage gets. And that is because fat percentage, your body fat, is very crucial to the absorption of vitamin D. And it's not, it's not that I'm trying to get very thin, I'm already thin enough as it is. So I'm trying to get super lean. In order for your body to handle intermittent fasting, you need to be on steroids. If you want your body to be able to handle intermittent fasting, you need to be on steroids. Which explains how Dwayne DeRock Johnson can gain so much muscle while fasting. It's because he was on steroids. It's really, it's also, the truth is, it's also the only way how you can gain muscle without gaining fat. You know, for me, it's not that I'm trying to get extremely thin. How is that your body is not designed to handle intermittent fasting? You're still growing, even if you're... Even if you're like 65 years old, you're still growing. You're never done growing until you die. The only way for you to stop growing is to be dead. That's the cold, that's the hard truth. You know, it's not that I want to be thin, that's true. I'm trying to get as lean as I can get.
but if I ended up losing even more fat, even though my doctor told me not to, there is a chance my doctor might have no choice but to put me on Remoron. Like, especially if my fat levels are so low that my bones become really brittle. Like, so brittle, in fact, that even touching it can cause it... Even lifting one pound can cause my bones to shatter. Anorexia is a really cruel disorder. It can take your independence away. Like, meaning, the only way to save people with anorexia is to monitor them. L leave them to their own devices, they're gonna die. They are going to die. So taking their independence away <clears throat> is really the only way to save their life. Why is losing weight so hard? Why it's... Sometimes, there are some people who want to make more money because they have a greater physical urge to eat. Like, their urge to eat is greater than the will to live. Why is it that for some people that their constant physical ur constant urge to eat is greater than the will to live? The answer might lie within genetics. Genetics might actually play a bigger role than you think. You know, for those with hypothyroidism, the truth is, they are not eating enough as it is. The, the truth is, even though most of us are led to believe that they are eating too much, like the media wants you to believe that, the truth is, they are eating too little, even though they are extra... Like, and if they lose fat... Like, hypothyroidism makes it hard for your immune system to use energy, which means the only way for your immune system to use and have enough energy for you to fight off infections is for you to have more fat in your body, is to have a greater level of fat deposits. And some people are more prone to weight gain than others. That's because biology has a bigger role. And where you live can affect your likelihood of becoming overweight. How? Air quality plays a bigger role than you think. Which means that... The, the dirtier the air you breathe, the fatter you're, likely, you're more likely to become. That's no joke. Scientists over in China studied mice living near factories and compared it to the mice living far away from the factory. They, did this, they made a shocking discovery. Mice that lived that called uh, that inhabited close to a factory were off, more often not obese compared to the normal the suburban sewer rats. They did a comparison as a means of proving that the sewer rats living close to the factories more or less they were more obese than their suburban counterparts. What was causing all that to happen? A lot of it has to do with air pollution. It, it, it has nothing to do with what we're eating or how much we're eating. It has nothing to do with that. It 
has nothing to do with what we're eating or how much we're eating. It's got nothing to do with that. The truth is, it has nothing to do with what we're eating or how much we're actually eating. No, it doesn't. It has a lot more to do with the quality of the air we're breathing. When you breathe in dirty air, how does pollution lead to obesity? Like, we used the same plastic as we did back in the 50s. Yet our kids were not... Uh, the kids in the... We are exercising a lot more now than we were in the 50s. We were eating the same types of food as we were in the 1950s. Yet obesity rates are still high. And to explain this... Those living near factories... Were hit with obesity really hard. And they couldn't even help it. They could not even help it. They didn't change it. They didn't change their diet to where they became overweight as a result of it. No, they ate the same food as before they became obese. Yet suddenly they became obese. How is it that? How is it that they suddenly became obese, even though they were eating the same food as they were before they suddenly became obese? The answer might have to do more with the quality of the air we're breathing. We had set sedentary jobs in the 50s. Like, the same amount of sedentary jobs as we did now. What was... But what's really causing the epidemic to begin with? Let me explain. There are several factors to the epidemic. No, it's not entirely your fault you became overweight. It's not entirely your fault. No, you're not at fault. <clears throat> you're not entirely at fault. So what's... What's really contributing to the epidemic? The truth? It has nothing to do with what we're eating or how much we're eating. The truth is, it's got nothing to do with how much we're eating or what we're eating. That truth, that myth was busted, that myth was busted back in 2016. When scientists over in China discovered morbidly, ob uh, morbidly obese rats that were inhabiting near fact that inhabited the sewers close to the factories. And they made a comparison. They compared them to the normal, the suburban rats. One one thing that is shocking is they discovered that it's not what we're eating, what they're eating, or how much they're eating that was causing them to become obese. It was actually air pollution that is contributing and fueling the epidemic. And creating... It was actually air pollution that was creating the obesogenic environment. So it's not... 
It's not the parents' fault anymore that they're making their kids fat. Whose fault is it? Whose fault is it now? Whose fault is it now? Those big industrial companies who pump out a lot of uh, air pollution. So it's not the parents' fault anymore. Because for years, we always blamed it on the parents for making our children overweight. But the truth is, it's not their fault anymore. It's not entirely their fault, nor is it the child's fault. They It has more to do with air quality than you think. When air quality is poor, you're more likely to become overweight. Ubergewicht. You're actually more likely to become overweight if you live near a factory. Why is it that? Mainly because air pollution can disrupt your hormonal system in an irreversible manner. It can disrupt a hormonal system. The disruptions it will cause to the endocrine system are irreversible. They are, in fact, irreversible. And possibly even the effects will get, might get passed on from one generation to another. Kind of like, Ag kind of like Agent Orange. Kind of like Agent Orange. You know how the effects of Agent Orange... ...are irreversible? Yeah. For those who get exposed to it, and they're going to live out the rest of their days with the effects. Yeah. The effects, even though their children haven't heard of it, there's even the children are living with the effects of Agent Orange, even though they never heard of it. Birth defects can cripple your health in an irreversible manner. It's going to cripple your health in an irreversible manner. The effects of Agent Orange are irreversible. It, it, those chemicals are... Those obesogenic chemicals might actually be doing the same thing to us. might actually be doing the same thing to us. They might actually be doing the same thing, like causing the damage, and possibly even transgenerational. Leave your child to their own devices. If they... So... don't have to worry about dieting anymore because <clears throat> for years we blamed it on poor diet and no exercise but then studies have research has shown that it's not about diet or exercise anymore or how much we're eating or how much we're exercising it ha uh, it might have to do more with air quality than you think. Which means that when you breathe in dirty air, your likelihood of becoming obese actually increases exponentially. It's going to increase exponentially the longer you stay in the polluted area. That's that has a lot of air pollution.
you'd have to live with the effects for the rest of your life. There is once your ex once your exposure is to the point where you're actually gaining weight, no matter how much you're eating, there is no turning back. Because even if it doesn't cause obesity, you're still fucked. Even if it doesn't cause obesity, you're still fucked. alter your hormonal system to where even cutting down on your food will not work. At all. To where it'll only make things worse. And it's not entirely your fault you're making your kids fat. Nor is it the child's fault either. It has to... Ugh. Who's really to blame for... Who's really at fault? The ones pumping out the pollution are the ones that are at the biggest fault. They're the ones at fault. The ones pumping out most of the pollution are the ones at fault. The truth is, they're actually the ones at fault. It's not the parents of the overweight child, nor is it the overweight child that became overweight. So, it's neither the parent... Uh, whose fault is it that their child became overweight? It's not entirely the parent's fault. Nor is it the child's fault, either. And who's really to blame? For the epidemic? Whose fault is it? That their child became overweight? It's neither the parent's fault nor is it the child's fault. We used to put the fault to the child then. Some people put it to the parent's fault. But now, it's neither of those, those people who are at fault anymore. It's neither of them who are at, uh, it's neither the child nor is it the parent who's at fault for making the child overweight. Whose fault is it now? The ones pumping out all the, the CO2 are the ones at fault. The ones pumping out huge amount of CO2 are the ones at fault. They are the ones at fault. Because... So it's not entirely their fault. So the parents 
or not at fault anymore. Because initially we thought it was the parent um, child's fault at first, because it's their choice. Which the truth is, it's not entirely the child's fault, or is it the parent's fault? Now we discovered that it's not entirely the child's fault they became overweight. Right, yeah, fine. Whose fault is it really now? It's not entirely the child's fault, nor is it entirely the parent's fault anymore. Whose fault is it now? That her children are overweight? It's not the child's fault, nor is it the parent's fault anymore. We... At first, we put the blame. We blamed it on the child, then we blamed it on the parents. N now, it's not. It's not entirely their fault that their child. The child became overweight. Whose fault well, is it that a lot of children are becoming overweight now? The ones pumping out all the pollution. The ones who are releasing a lot of toxic air pollution and toxic pollution into the air. Like, yes, I'm talking about industrial waste. I'm wondering if it's affecting cats, too. Not just the sewer mice. Not just the sewer mice, but also the the cats. <clears throat> I'm wondering if it's also affecting the cats too. You don't need to blame the parents anymore for the child's gigantic waistline. So whose fault is it really now? It's not the child's fault anymore, nor is it the parent's fault. So there's no need for the, neither the child nor the parent to take the blame for their obesity. So you don't need to blame them anymore. And anyways, this should be it for this video, for part 2. Stay tuned for part 3, a futuristic apartment building, type 1.
as always, thank you for watching, stay tuned for more, and there's, don't forget to follow me on social media at Gaming with Austin. As always, stay, don't forget, if you want to, you can support me on Patreon if you want. As always, thank you for watching, stay tuned for more, and choose.